Hey guys, so I wanted to come on here and it's been three years since I first got this little system right here, the Super Retrocade. It needs a little bit of dusting and everything. I haven't had a chance to do that, so I'll probably take a, you know, a, a cl I'll probably take a Lysol wipe to it and clean it a little bit and that should make it look good as new. Uh, but I got to thinking about it, and I've heard other people talk about it. Heck, there's even people in the UK that got this, but they got the version that uh, basically has the uh, the rating on the back here, the P, uh, the 12 rating or something. And like I said, it got me thinking, you know, it got me thinking about it. And I basically thought, you know, I'd come on here, and as usual with a lot of my videos, do an uncut you know, um, unscripted uh, video, just, you know, off of my, off the top of my head thoughts, you know, update on, you know, the Retrocade itself. Now, I got to give a shout out to Rerez, and I got to give a shout out to Mad Little Pixels, and John Riggs, and, you know, even uh, uh, several others, for, you know, not only talking about the system, and basically inspiring me to get it when I did three years ago, but also for helping me, you know, be able to unlock a secret that I was kind of surprised Rerez hasn't done an update video on when it comes to this, but it's perfectly understandable why they wouldn't want to do that. And that secret is how to add more games, because initially what you get here is a little over 90 games uh, pre-installed right off the bat, and some of them are licensed by the likes of iRim, Capcom, Data East, and so on. You know, so you have some officially licensed game on, uh, games on here, but then there are some that you, you know, don't see that you would probably think, well, if they really want to, uh, I guess you could say, showcase how retro this is to kind of get into that, you know, retro market and kind of outdo the likes of the NES Classic and, you know, the, uh, the Sega Genesis Mini that, you know, maybe they might add on more. And like I said, the, the, the things on here are licensed by the likes of Capcom, iRim, you know, Data East, and, and there's another one, I can't think of it right now. But, you know, but what's cool about it, though, with those licensed games, with those games that are officially licensed, is you're not just getting what you would expect, like with the NES Classic and the SNES Classic and the Genesis Mini, and even the TurboGrafx Mini, you're not just getting the, um, the console ports or the console versions of these games, you're also getting side by side the arcade games, the actual arcade games that you would go into the arcade um, areas at your local amusement park or camping areas or 7-Elevens or wherever and play that you would add coins into. So that's kind of a cool um, aspect here. That's kind of a cool aspect here uh, to know that. Now, what makes this system even more interesting, like I said, is you know, you can have, you have the ability to add more games. And the way you could do that is either you could use an, an SD card, you know, an SD, a regular SD card or a micro SD card with a SD card adapter, or you could use uh, what I've been using. In fact, a lot of people were kind of surprised that you, you can even use this. And that's a flash drive. I've been using a flash drive uh, lately that you can insert into the second player port of the system and you can basically install, you can uh, uh, basically use your ROMs from there. You can use the ROMs that you installed on that, on the system from there, and not have to rely on an SD card. Now, you now if you're wondering why I chose to go with a USB, uh, USB flash drive, you know, instead of a, um, an S, you know, an SD card, I went back and watched one of my old videos, and when I talked about this a couple of years ago, and the reason I decided to change tactics, uh, basically, is because when I was trying to put some ROMs onto the SD card, as I was taking it out, I must have done something, I must have touched something, because the computer ended up crashing, and it took several, you know, reboots, you know, self-repair, if you will, uh, to get back to normal. So that's basically what happened there. That's basically what happened. And that caused me to pay, basically think of, okay, what could I do that's an alternative and then I realized, wait a minute, flash drives, USB flash drives, are basically SD cards, but in more, I guess you could say, safer, um, uh, but, but the more of a safer, uh, or, well, I, what I'm trying to say, again, this is off the top of my head, the, the more of a safer version of an SD card, more of a, like, less 
you know, trip kind of thing, that's trip wire like, or trip circuitry kind of um, device where you could save files, if not in this case, you know, dump ROMs onto that you could use on something like the Super Retro K. Um, hold on for a sec. I have to go check my computer sometimes because what happens is because when you pause an update, you know, with Windows 10 or Windows 11, it feels like it just got to have to constantly, it feels like it's constantly fighting that. I don't know why. And I know people might say, well, just let the update happen. I do, but right now I'm kind of holding off until I see what happens job-wise and then maybe I'll just let it do what it's got to do. I do the interview or whatever uh, in person on whatever comes up. But anyway, getting back to what I was saying here. Getting back to what I was saying, the USB, what happened, speaking of the computer, like I said, uh, you know, just to reiterate, I basically tried to, you know, add ROMs onto the SD card, and when I tried to take it out of the SD card slot, something happened, there was a tr uh, circuit, you know, or something like that that got tripped, and it caused my computer to crash. Thank the Lord, it was able to self-repair itself, because that's what it does when it does these kind of things. It was able to self-repair itself. And, you know, move on from there. I was able to do that. But, again, that got me to thinking, as I mentioned um, just moments ago, it got me thinking, well, it's a good alternative. And the best alternative I figured out was, wait, you know, was use a USB flash drive because it's technically an SD card, but with a more, I guess you could say, uh, safer uh, uh, safer uh, way of putting on, saving files or putting dumping ROMs, if you know what I mean. And when I mentioned this to some people, when I mentioned this to some people, when I mentioned this, not to some people, but when I mentioned it in the video I did a couple years back, some people were actually surprised. They're like, whoa, I never thought about that. You know, so that is basically, if you ever consider getting something like the Retrocade uh, down the line, that if it, you know, gives you the ability to, you know, dump ROMs on there, you know, add more games, always remember you have more than just the SD card option, you have, or the SD card answer, you have options. And those options are you can actually use USB flash drives or even external hard drives if you want to. Now, here's a question that I'm sure a lot of people will wonder. Is it still worth it three years later? Is the system still worth having if not considering getting and adding to your retro collection? And I would say yes. And the reason I say that is, one, you have an alternative of controllers you can use. Now, it does have, it does come with a two-pack controller. Basically, this is one of the controllers. Another one is still in its plastic, uh, in plastic container, if you will. Still wrapped up in plastic, you know, just like when I first got it. You also have the Retrobit Sega controller. You have this here. You have the Retrobit Sega controller. Um, as well, which you could utilize not just with the Retrocade, but if you have the Sega Genesis Mini, you could use it on there too. But if you have Genesis games or Genesis game hacks on the Retrocade, then I definitely recommend getting a, this officially licensed Sega Retrobit controller uh, to play. You also have, according to Mad Little Pixels, you have the Hyperkin. You have the Hyperkin SD, SNES controller um, as well. But just for this, we're going to go with the regular one. So I'm going to plug in the regular one into the uh, first player port here uh, right now. And there you go. And I'm just going to wrap up these other ones real quickly so I don't lose them and everything. Because I do have the Sega Genesis Mini in my room. And it's going to take time, but I'm thinking of doing something around here that might be beneficial to me uh, down the line, um, if you will. And apparently there was no signal put out because I haven't turned on, I have to turn the TV back on. I do apologize for that. Uh, you know, it's automatic, like, hey, if you don't play it for a while, it's going to say, like, I'm going off, bye. <laughs> no. Uh, but anyway, we're going to turn that back on real quickly. I do apologize uh, for that. And this is my Vizio that I talked about uh, before uh, in the video where I mentioned about the 4K and all that uh, recently. But here I'm going to turn it on, and so we're going to turn it on here, it should boot up anytime, 
and there it is. So there's the retrocade. That's the retrocade there. I do apologize for the glare. I do apologize for that. Uh, not much I can do about it. You know, not really much I can do about the glare there. So I do apologize. I do apologize for the glare. And there it is. You can hear it. Let's see what we can do it like that. See if that works. I don't know if that works better, guys. I again do apologize for any glare. You can see a little bit of it right now. So we're gonna move the camera up just a little bit more so you can see better again i do apologize for the glare but this is the this is um this is my rom state here oh these are the roms i have but um i didn't want to start that but i guess i'm gonna start the game this is one of the roms i put up And this is Avengers. Again, I do apologize for the... But this is basically one of the games you could, um, if you wanted to, can... You do that. Now, if you press, uh, press save and... Um, save and select, uh, not select, but start and select, you can go, uh, back, uh to the main menu and then I think that's not it what you can do as well is if you want to we can take this out and it'll go right back that's the initial uh, again I don't know if you can see it very well and again I do apologize for the glare but this is the initial um, um, menu of games. This is what you initially get with the system uh, right off the bat. So this is what you get with them. This is all the games. Again, I do apologize for the glare. Uh, but this is what you get with the games and with everything so far. Let me just move this up just a little bit more so you guys can see better. I do apologize for that. But this is what you initially get with the system. This is all the, the games you get. Like, if you like R-Type, you get R-Type. You get all three R-Types. You get Burger Time and Super Burger Time. I think you get both Burger Times, I think. Let me see. Yeah, you get Burger Time and Super Burger Time. And, um... Yeah, you get a lot of good games on here that you wouldn't... Um, that you got originally on the retro bit generations So again, is it still good to have? Yeah, could you get a uh, bionic commander you get bionic commando arcade? You get blade master you get boogie wings You get armored warriors, which is a good game apparent from what I understood from what rate re res has said You get double dragon. I think the arcade version and double dragon 3 You have final fight on there you get a whole bunch of games again, like you would, like you got on the uh, uh, retro cage. You get Street Fighter 2010, which uh, angry video game that James Rolfe uh, talked about. And then again, like if you want to, you can add in this. You can add in that via uh, SD card or USB, like I do, and then watch what comes up, if it comes up. And right there, you have SD card mounted or USB card mounted and you go to that you go to that by basically select going with the uh, button and you select a and there you go now you might say well just it cannot be found well that's because it takes time to load up and once it loads up you have pretty much a good selection of games now what surprised me about this too is right here we have uh, right here uh, uh, on the upper left hand corner Oh, right hand corner we have Holoseum. Holoseum. Now, uh, James Wolf, Doug Walker, and uh, Andre Meadows went to Galloping Ghost in Chicago, and that was one of the games, uh, arcade cabinets they had. So I figured, I was thinking to myself, I wonder if it could work. So I press start, or I press A to get to the game, and it should pop up, I think. 
There you go. You see how it's kind of like, kind of diagonal a little bit, kind of like bending around? Uh, that's because of the fact that it's re representing how it was looked at in the arcade cabinet. And it is a Sega game. Again, you can see how the Sega logo, if you can see that very well. Again, I do apologize for the glare. Um, it shows you. It shows you how it's looked. And then there you have Holoceum right there, uh, which is pretty cool. So you can press that. And then you can select who you want to select here and go from there. But you can see there that even something like that, that was kind of surprising to me that like something like that would play on here because there are some games and people like Mad Little Pixel has said that yeah, some games will not work uh, unless you do something. For example, you, and you can see some of the games I played on my uh, thing. Just check them out. Now, uh, just check them out there if you want to. Now, some of the games that I did get are the hacks like Sally Acorn and Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2. I got that. You got Tailspin uh, UA, which is European edition, I think. And I got WrestleFest, it's on here. And I think Superstars, I think I got that one. Uh, again, these are all the ROMs I got. Not, now, again, here's the thing, not all of them are going to work. That's the, that's the issue, not all of them will work. Some of them will, some of them won't. You can even have a hack like <laughs> Kung Fu. You know, the NES Kung Fu as He-Man. You can play as He-Man in the Kung Fu area. You know, so you're going to have a lot of possibilities here. There is no doubt. Now, would Nintendo World Championship work? No. Because I even tried that at one point. It doesn't work. It does pop up, but I don't know if it works. You know what I'm saying? Like, you get the screen, but you don't get anything else outside of that. As far as I know. You don't get anything else outside of that. So, yeah, is it still worth getting in my opinion? Absolutely. It is definitely still worth getting. You get the Robocop 2 or Robocop Arcade if you want. Bunny Rabbot, you get in Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2. That's another hack people did. So I'm really happy to get that when, uh, uh, when I have the opportunity. Because, you know, that's the one thing a lot of fans want to do. They, you know, when you have those kind of hacks, they want to see how, you know, what it would be like to play a certain character they feel should have been in the game. You know, so, yeah, you know, in the end, though, is it worth getting still? Um, is the Super Retrocade uh, worth getting? You know, still, in my opinion. You know, is it still worth getting this? The Super Retrocade? Absolutely. It is definitely still worth getting. And again, there are two various options of how to add games on there. And my, my preference for me is a USB flash drive because it's safer and more, um, more easier to, to utilize and less stressful for you and your computer. But yeah, I, I highly recommend getting it. And again, it's up to you, like what kind of controller you want to use. You want to use the one that came with it, which works very well. Kind of gives me that PS5 kind of like feel to it on the, on the controller itself. Not the buttons, but the, the, the feel of it. 
But you also have, like I said, you have the RetroBit Sega if you want to get that one. And you have the Hyperkin Super Nintendo one if you want to get that one. Uh, but yeah, overall I do recommend getting it if you still are interested in the RetroCade. Again, initially you get 90 games installed, which is pretty cool, pretty good. Um, you know, and those are officially licensed. But you can also, like I said, depending on your preference, USB flash drive, SD card, micro SD card via SD adapter, or even external hard drive, you can add more games. And people have used those various means to add thousands of more games. I mean, what I just showed you basically outnumbers the official 90 games on there. And I know some people will feel like, you know, you shouldn't do that, but hey, you know, but hey, when you think about it, there are basically a lot of sites out there, safe sites as far as I know, that allow you to get these, um, these ROMs uh, with, you know, without an issue, uh, without an issue, if you will. But I do recommend it. Uh, if you're looking into it, it's about 60 bucks, maybe gone down a little bit more. But I do recommend getting it. And again, I gotta give a shout out to Mad Little Pixels, John Riggs, and Rerez uh, for inspiring uh, and recommending this game system for someone like me to get, as well as helping me out with the ROMs and how to add pictures as well when it comes to the ROMs. Um, but anyway, though, guys, that's all I'm gonna say. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section. And until then, I'm out.